Hello everyone and welcome to the Writer's Corner live show. Here on the Writer's Corner live show we connect you to we connect authors to each other and we help readers find new authors to love. You probably already have your favorite type of book whether it's fiction or non-fiction but you never know we may just get you to, to introduce you to your new favorite genre um, and help you discover books that you never know existed. On the show, we introduce you to either seasoned authors, but also new and aspiring authors. And some of our seasoned authors will even help you to get published right the first time. On our show today is Kristen L. Jackson. So let's give a warm welcome, first of all, to Mary, who's my co-host, Mary Jackson. She's the author of the Poolisher series. So hi, Mary, and welcome to the show. Hi, Bridgetti. It's so nice to see you this morning and that we've got all our technology working because our power kept going in and out, in and out, in and out. And I thought, oh, no. <laughs> so everything's working good. And I'm so excited to see Kristen and get to interview her and, um, you know, give her that that space to be able to talk about herself and her book and, and um, let other people know she's here in the world with her book and they can find her, where to find her. And we're excited to interview her, aren't we? Yes, absolutely. So, Kristen, welcome to the show. Thank you so, so much. It's so nice to finally be able to sit down and talk to you guys. I'm really thrilled to be here. Thanks for having me. I know. So, so, yes. <laughs> Jackson Power today. So, so yes. you, you're a teacher. Go ahead. Go ahead. You're a school teacher uh by profession and you are in reading in pennsylvania you've got um you've got another half and you have two <laughs> sons and you have two dogs you said and you love reading reading is your first love and i, I want to mm -hmm. ask you about a place you told us that you have got a special place that you enjoy writing called the poconos tell us a little bit about mm -hmm. that because our audience is worldwide and so people may not know uh, um, where this place is because you said that, that it's, the, it's the one thing that gives you inspiration. And your, your book is The Keeper of the Watch. So did you write the book mainly um, there or, or were you all over or did you just go there for inspiration? <laughs> well, I did write a good portion of Keeper of the Watch while I was there. Um, we only bought the cabin about four years ago. Um, and so we have a little cabin that we have there and we go there on the weekends. And oh, nice. it's a very peaceful place. There's a little creek that runs through the backyard and we bring the, we have actually three dogs and we bring the three dogs with us. Um, we have large breed dogs, so we have to take two cars so that the dogs can come with wow. us too. <laughs> <laughs> because each dog weighs approximately 150 pounds. So <laughs> it's, an it's a lot of dogs. It's an adult human. Oh, my God. <laughs> but, yeah, so on really nice days, I like to go um, take a chair outside by the creek with my laptop, and I'll write outside. But when it's cold out, I'm perfectly happy um, with the heater on inside the cabin writing there, too. So it's just a good place to escape where you don't have – the responsibilities of home and you can just focus on writing. So it's really nice. And my family is very understanding of my passion for writing and they're perfectly okay with me spending time on my laptop. Um, I'm, I'm actually an, a morning person and I like to write in the early morning hours. So I do a lot of my writing before anybody else even gets up. So yeah, it's my favorite place, but I also write at home too. Um, of course I have to because I spend more time at home than I do at the cabin. So we actually just closed up the cabin because um, it's only a three season cabin. So we don't go there in the winter. So I'm sad that I'll be missing it for the winter, but, and that gives us something to look forward to. Yeah, I've been there to the Poconos about 30 years ago. Yes. Yeah. So I, I was telling um, Brigetti about it and it's, um, because she had not heard of it before, of course, not, I mean, not living here. And even people who live right. here, you know, don't always know about it. So, yeah, um, yeah. so it's, I have a really great memory from there and um, it's beautiful. Um, and I want to come to your cabin sometime because I don't <laughs> have that luxury of having <laughs> that time. I have to go get in nature and I, I, you know, I haven't, every writer that I know 
Um, we all, morning time is that, it's like before the world wakes is the perfect, perfect time, time for writing. Because at, at night, night you're too tired. tired. I, don't I don't know about, about you, but I get, get woken, woken up during the middle of night with things. Mm-hmm. And sometimes mm-hmm. I lay there and go, I'm, I'm too tired, tired to get, get up and do this. It's 3 o'clock in the morning. I need my family. Yeah. Can, Can you help me remember, remember it in three hours? hours? <laughs> <laughs> and it never happens, but it's, it's that early morning. I don't know, it's almost like the world is, it's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. It's peaceful and um. It's, it's, it's just pure. It's, it's, it's just yes. like where energy, energy happens, happens at that time, it seems like. Yeah. yeah. I, I agree, agree with that. that. Yes. yes. Yeah. 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 Um, I, I, uh, how old are your sons? sons? My, My sons, sons are 27 and 24, so they're grown. Okay. okay. All right. Yeah. Well, then you have a lot of time now. Yeah. So I, I do, do. yeah. Um, now, now, is this, this, this is your first book, book with... Black, Black Rose, Rose writing, writing, right? It is, yes. yes. I'm, I'm actually under contract, under contract, Mary, for a children's picture book with a different publisher that will come out in spring. spring. So, so we, we have that, that in common, and not just our last names, names but also <laughs> different picture books. That's awesome. <laughs> so, so, who is that? It's, it's called Shipper Publishing, publishing and it's, it's, it's a publishing, publishing company, company, company actually based in Pennsylvania. In Pennsylvania. So oh, it's a local. Uh, so, 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 what age is it for? Three to six, um, and I teach preschool. Um, so, so it's, it's, an, it's a logical place for me to go with writing. And actually, the, the first book I ever wrote was a children's picture book, unpublished. But um, that's what really inspired me. I love I love children's picture books. I think they they don't get the attention that they should um, because they're so many. Um, there's so, so many things, things you can teach children through reading at that, that young age. So I feel really strongly about, you know, those, those kind of books, books too. So, but, um, but I really, really get drawn into those novels too. So, yeah, I, I have one out on submission right now um, that's an adult book. So I'm trying to try my hand at different um, genres and age groups of writing. So that's really nice. Cool. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm doing, doing the same, same thing, thing. And, and that's really awesome. awesome. I, just I just got, got a, a message back that um, a middle grade, grade reader that Thornton Klein and I have done, age 8 to 12, is in the final submission stage uh, being approved. So I'm, I'm very excited, excited about that. That is exciting. Yes. Yeah. Getting it. I'm looking forward to getting it into the school systems because it is written in a way it can go with curriculum and uh, kind of go along with um, – if, if they're teaching about mindfulness and uh, ownership and looking to turn things around and be more motivating and inspiring to each other, and it comes from a bullying point of view. Oh, so that's, that's, that's a great topic to hit on. Yeah. yeah. So I, I'm praying it's going to, you know, be big. I really yeah. am. Yes. Yeah. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So what's yeah. up, so Kristen? Have, we'll, we're Jenny, we'll have to have her back on. Uh-huh. Her children's book comes out. We'll have to have her back on. That'd be great. Yes. Absolutely. So Keepers of Watch is your first book in, a, in in the Dimension 7 series. How many books are there going to be in this series or don't you know yet? I'm not 100% sure yet. Um, there could potentially be 12 because there are actually 12 dimensions. Um, and the first book takes place, they, they jump to Dimension 7. Um, the book, I'm, I'm almost finished writing Keeper 2. Um, and that that one takes place in dimension um, eight. So it's each month he jumps. Maybe I should give you a little background. <laughs> so, the so the books are sequential. <laughs> what? So the books are not sequential. Yes, they are. In the fir- first book, um, the main character Chase Walker um, has just turned eighteen. The uncle that raised him passed away unexpectedly. Um, and as he's going through his uncle's belongings, he finds this watch in the safe that he never knew existed. Um, and comes to find out that it's a watch, watch that's been passed down through his ancestors. Um, and only people in his bloodline who have been born on certain dates will activate the watch. Um, and so it, it goes... Um, one one two two so like like january 1st um february 2nd and so on consecutively so chase was born on on june 6th 6 6 um and so he does have the proper birth 
for a thing to activate the watch. Oh. Um, if he chooses to connect with the watch, and now that he's come in contact with it, the watch is calling to him. Um, so, so now he's fighting it because it's strange to him. He knows nothing about it. And so he's fighting this kind of attraction to the watch. Um, if he chooses to put it on, it will connect with him so completely that the blood it, his blood, blood will flow through the watch, and that's what powers the watch. And he will have to keep it on for the whole whole 18th year. So every month, he will jump to the next dimension. It's out of his control. Once he puts the watch on, it's out of his control, and he will go every month to the next dimension. So it's a little bit complicated, but, <laughs> but um, yeah, so he meets um, another watch keeper, Alex, of course, we have to have a love interest, um, <laughs> and she, on the opposite of him, she has known all her life that she is a keeper of the watch and has trained, um, and she's aware, so she can answer all of his questions, so she comes in kind of saves his life and the two now are jumping together so um and, and this is their adventure so they uh, of course i'm going to give something away in the first book he of course does decide to connect with his watch and then they jump to the next dimension at the end of the first book they're ready to jump to to the next dimension after that so um that's where book two picks up so it's um, got a, the first book kind of has once they jump to the next dimension, dimension seven. Um, it has a little bit of a dystopian feel. Um, there are people called the watch hunters who are hunting these watches. They want this power to be able to jump to the twelve dimensions, um, of course. So um, they're running from them, fighting with them. Um, so it's got a little bit of everything in it. <laughs> and I'm really excited writing the second book. It's it's really taken hold of me. Um, wow. I mean, so where, 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 where did your inspiration come from? And I want to tell you that this has elements of something I'm writing about that's really, that's realistic in life that really is happening with people being um, intuitive, empathic, and psychic. But you're writing, yours is fantastical, and um, mm -hmm. I love it. I'm excited. I'm going to actually um, get it for uh, my, my daughter, my oldest, would love this book. Oh, and great. Awesome. He's a writer, too. And um, I think she'll totally be fascinated by it. What is, where did the inspiration come from? This? Because this is very in depth. Mm -hmm. um, and it's great that you have the vision for more book, books because uh, publishers like that. Yeah. Um, and we, yeah. readers like that, you know, they fall in love with this. They're going to want, okay, what's going on next? You know? Yeah. So yeah. Where did all the inspiration come from for it? Well, actually I've always loved to wear a watch. I, I, have this need to know what time it is. And I get that from my dad. He was the same. He always, it's one of my memories of him. He always had a watch on his wrist. Um, he passed away unexpectedly. Um, it was four years ago in September. Um, he had a massive heart attack and no one knew it was coming. We didn't know he had any heart conditions or anything. So it was very sudden. Um, kind of took the breath away of the family for a, quite some time. Um, and so after he passed away, I, I asked my mom for one of his watches. He had lots of them, but I just wanted to have one, you know, that I, I could just have of his. Um, and it wasn't too long after that, that, that the idea just came to me. I just thought, wouldn't it be cool to write a story about a boy with a watch that, that kind of allows them to have some kind of power? I've always loved science fiction and fantasy things. Um, I love when, like, the X-Men or, you know, things, people that have powers. I, I just really have always loved that. Um, so I kind of wanted to take, put a new spin on that, so to speak. So, but, yeah, my, my dad was really the inspiration um, from just, just that watch sparked the idea. And then I started thinking about it and then just started writing. That's amazing. <laughs> I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a. It's a beautiful memory to have or to write, to be able to have the inspiration of your dad's memory to drive you to write. I think that's amazing. Um, Thank you. Yes. It's, it's special. It's, I think, you know, it's, it's, it's a way to allow your dad's memory to live on. Um, 
and and because every time you write, every time you think of writing, your dad's in the back of your mind. Um, well, yeah, you know, and so it's helped you write it, hasn't he? So he's probably helped you write this. Yeah. Do you weave any, you know, apart from your dad being the inspiration, does it make you weave any of your familial or your family stories um, into the book? Is any of that is any of that hidden in there? Is it is any of your dad's personality um, hidden in there? Is the things that your family will recognize or do they recognize that about your style of writing or something about your dad? Absolutely. Um, when Chase, the main character, talks about his uncle Charlie, um, who passed away unexpectedly. Um, some of Uncle Charlie's traits are my dad's. Um, he used used to tell jokes, and he would laugh so hard while he was telling the jokes that he couldn't get the joke out. So then you ended up laughing laughing with him just because he was laughing, you know. So I, I have not because of the joke, just the because he was laughing. That. I get yeah, that. That's right. amazing. Yeah, you haven't got to the pipeline yet. It's just fun, funny because he's laughing so hard. So I have a little part in the book where Chase is remembering that about his uncle. Um, and then there are some other things. My dad really liked looking at the stars and his favorite constellation in particular was Orion. And, and you'll see a lot of references to the stars and um, and Orion and Orion's belt and all of that is, is all woven through the story. So yeah, definitely pieces of him are in there. So how does your mom feel oh, about beautiful. that? I mean, does, how, has your mom read? Has your mom read the book? Yeah, several times actually, <laughs> and she actually likes to beta read too. So she's reading Keeper Two for me right now. Even though science fiction fantasy is not her favorite, she will always be my biggest supporter. So she will read everything that I write, and she she will love it just because I wrote it. <laughs> so yeah, she she loves it. I do have a big section where I dedicated Keeper of the Watch um, to my dad, um, but I make sure I mention her because she's she really is my strongest supporter along with my husband. Um, so yeah, she she loves it, and actually my children's picture book that's coming out in the spring spring was um inspired by my mom so i dedicate that one to her so um she likes my mom loves to wear socks with pictures on them um she calls them fun socks <laughs> yes she's in her 70s but she loves her fun socks so the book that's coming out in spring is called jocelyn's box of socks so oh, <laughs> that that's so that sweet oh, I love that's, that's great that's awesome so, isn't isn't yeah. it beautiful um the things in our lives that inspire stuff for us to write. It's, it's just so amazing how it, it only it, takes that little spark. Yeah, I yeah. know. Cause I, I, I wrote it. I haven't submitted it yet. I'm still got to get the illustrations on it, but Carson had on um, uh, his towel coming out of the shower and it was a superhero towel and he kept running and I went, Oh my gosh. And I sat there in 20 minutes. And <laughs> said, Look, you know, and it was just that instant spark of inspiration. Yes him um and he continues to inspire but um it's beautiful yeah. that you've done that for your mom and dad and um and that it's you know you have that love and support because it does mean a lot um to have that love and support that allows you to do what what your spirit is calling you to do um and um i'm excited i can't wait to to read it when was your release date for which for one keeper watch when was the release keeper of the watch was february 1st so okay been okay, out for, so it's been out for a little while, yeah. right? Yeah. And so, are you on? Because um, I know, are, Bergetti, are we almost out of time? Um, or how? Almost, yes. I can't believe it. My okay. goodness, the time goes so quickly. I know. We it's like we just started. Well, it, just, it, <laughs> it does. It goes by so quickly, and yeah, you know, we the the conversations get so interesting, and um, I love to be able to share your backstory. And hi, no. sorry, life is happening right Mama. here. <laughs> yeah, can you please go talk to your daddy? Sorry. No problem. <laughs> I, I, That's okay. We're, usually, we're this a family. On, usually this is on a time when nobody's home, but it's we're okay. We're a family-friendly show, just, so all good. It's yeah. a family-friendly <laughs> show. Yes, everyone's included. They inspire what we do, and so. And you could probably hear my dog's barking throughout the whole thing they're outside but they're barking and i'm kind of rolling my eyes thinking oh no there go the dogs again <laughs> yeah, right. 
<laughs> no, I hear the dogs back there. That's <laughs> but let me ask you something. Are you on uh, Upbub and Goodreads? I am on I am on Goodreads. Yes. Okay, so you don't know if you're on BookBub yet. Okay. I don't think so. Yeah. Okay. And then um did you check there was an email that went out a while back and it was about uh people being on walmart.com. Did you see your books on walmart.com? It is. Yes, I was very excited to see that. Yes. yes. Very, very excited. So we want you to let everybody know where they can find you. Um, you know, all your uh places they can purchase and how people okay. can connect you and um you know do you do a blog i do um and that's on my website um okay. and that's that's https kristen l jackson dot wix site dot com slash kristen jackson author and then if you want the blog you do another slash for blog um so it's all on there um they can anybody can contact me um at my email that's kristen jackson author at yahoo.com and on my Facebook page is Kristen Jackson Author. Um, I'm on Twitter, and that's K L Jackson Author um, for Twitter. Um, I'm also you can find me on LinkedIn. Um, I'm on Pinterest under my name. So, yeah, it's it's exciting to be able yeah. to connect with people. So, All right, and there and it's on Amazon and probably Barnes and oh, Noble. Yes. Online. Yeah, yeah. And, and Blackbird's writing, sure. Yeah, and Blackbird's writing dot com. Are there, are there any specials going on? Um, every once in a while, I'll get it from Amazon and I'll check and see if they're running a special, you know, or they've discounted right. the book, and then I'll, you know, I, I'll either I'll, I'll post that, you know, for people. So, do you yes. have anything going on right now? Are you running any specials? Are you doing giveaways or anything right now? Not right now. I I did just visit um. Uh, a seventh and eighth grade class, a group of kids um, at a school school nearby in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, um, and they were a creative writing group um, that asked their teacher if they could have a creative writing club. So it was really inspiring wow. to me. So I want to give a shout out to them because um, they inspired me because I said to them, I don't know when I was in seventh and eighth grade, if I would have joined um, a voluntary creative writing club. So um, I did do some giveaways during that visit um, last week. So, but I don't have anything special going on right now, but I'm going to put something in the works for the holidays. So oh, I'm sure. Here. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, um, okay. So tell me again, the age for the book. Um, it's young adult. Okay. So yeah. So Teens, um, teens and even, you know, new adult age would be fine. It, 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 the main character is 18. So, um, yeah, but it's, it's, it's got a little bit of violence in it, but not so much that, that younger readers couldn't read it. So and any, any young adult age child can, can read it. We're, we're adult. Yeah. That's Fantastic. Awesome. I'm excited. It was great to hear some more about you. We're going to have to invite you back on the show again for your next book. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. The time, flies, great. the time flies so, so quickly. I mean, I had a list of some more questions I wanted to ask you, and we're just out of time, unfortunately. So if, <laughs> if we'd, we'd, love to have, we'd love to invite you back on again. This was so much fun. So everyone, this was um, Keeper of the Watch, the first book, and Kristen's already working on the second book. When is that? When is that due to come out, Kristen? Well, the second book, I, I'm not under contract for that one yet. I just need to finish writing it, get some beta readers, edit it, and then I'll start submitting. So um, to Black Rose, I'm sure. So um, then we'll wait and see. <laughs> and your children's book when is that due out when do you think the children's it's, we don't have a set date yet it's just uh -huh. slated for spring 2019 so as soon as I get that, that date I'll start advertising it now it's did you submit that manuscript with pictures illustrations or did no you I, I, I'm just the author um, and the, the publishing company Schiffer Publishing helped me to match up with an illustrator. Um, and so that pro this process has been about two years um, since I actually signed the contract for that book before Keeper of the Watch. Um, wow. But because of finding an illustrator and waiting for the illustrations to get done and all of the things that go into it, it's just taken longer than... Um, Black Rose is actually, actually pretty quick with getting their books out. Um, not everyone is as quick as them, so... <laughs> I, I would agree with you. Yeah. yeah. 
Kristen, in closing, do you have do you have any advice for any new aspiring writers out there? Um, I do. I, I'm sure it's something that they've heard lots of times, but my motto is don't give up. Um, I did I did give up just a little bit. Um, I started writing um, and sent out a, a children's picture book manuscript to about 20 agents and got all rejections. And I thought, well, that's the universe telling me that I'm not meant to be a writer. I'm not <laughs> And I gave up for about eight years. I stopped wow. writing. I, you know, so so self doubt can be a big, a big, yeah, problem. You know, with writing. And so that was one of the things I talked to um, the group of kids that I talked to earlier this week about. Um, like I say, you know, eight y years is a lot of time wasted. I could have written so many books in that yeah. time if I wouldn't have given up. Um, and so finally I did start writing again, but I, I'd li like to share that story so that others feel, um, and more wow. compelled to keep going and not give up. And, um, you know, you, 20, I realize now is a drop in the bucket. Yeah, um, <laughs> publisher, I think is kind of your average to ship yeah. out to is about 30 to 50. And I don't know if Bridgetti and I have talked to anybody about that on this show yet. Yeah. But that is kind of an average, you know, I, I've got, Thornton and I have got a couple of authors we're trying to help them get published. And so it's, you know, every time there's a rejection, it's like, listen, I know we've been there. We've done that. It's okay. Listen, you have to think about how many times JK Rowling was rejected. That's right. You know, it was hundreds and she never gave up. This is what you want to do. This is your dream. Go for it. Just keep trying and persistence will pay off. Yes, especially if you, and you, know, if you believe in it. Self self belief is so huge, because sometimes we tell mm -hmm. us, you know, we have these stories in our head about ourselves. You know, I'm not good enough. Yes. I'll never amount to anything. Um, and it's not just our own self belief; it's the stories that others have told us um, about ourselves, and often it's uninformed stories. Uh, very often it's just mm -hmm. imaginary stuff, but these things live in our head. And if we can find a way to offload that and, um, and, and find a way of believing in ourselves, we'll get our stories out there and they won't remain, yes. they won't remain it, hidden. Um, just, you it know, takes mind space. Yeah. Abs yeah, absolutely. I agree. So we've just got to find mm -hmm. the strength and do the work and, and find that find that someone like you you know your dad was your inspiration find that someone that you care about so much that that their inspiration is enough for you to want to pick up the pen take out the dust of the typewriter and and get going and just focus you know cut out all the negative noise in your head and just focus on that mm -hmm. one person and yeah. allow that person to be the driving force and be your inspiration and just cut out the noise. Yes. Amen. And for me, that's also my husband. He's so supportive of this writing thing that I'm doing. I spend so much time with writing related things between marketing and writing and editing and all of the things that I'm doing along with working a full-time job that, yeah, if I, if I didn't have my husband to support me like he does, then you know, that's the other driving force for me. I, I, I I'm really lucky that way. Yeah. It's a big shout yeah, out to hubby. Yeah. Yes, yeah. <laughs> definitely. Yes, hubby's get shout outs today. Yes. 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 Yeah. Kristen, do you think you'd ever become a full-time um, writer and just give up your day job? Do you see that in the, in the, in the future I, for yourself? I would, I would love that. I would miss my kiddos at, at work. My, my preschool kids, but I, th I think that's the goal to someday have enough books out there that I could maybe write full time. But I think that's a lot of writers goal, um, whether we uh, actually achieve that or not, I don't know, but we will work toward it. So yes, right. I would love to be a full time writer. All right. Uh, well, we'll you know, we're going to send you good and good thoughts and we're going to just, we're going to just put into manifestation that that's going to happen. <laughs> it's going to happen for both of us. So we're there just going to keep going. I like that. Positive thoughts. 
Uh, absolutely. They're very powerful. So, yeah. well, I know that I have to go because I have an author event to get ready for, and you probably have some writing to do or just relaxation because it's <laughs> for what you're going to do. And, um, it, it, it is evening time for Bridgetti. So yes. She probably needs to do dinner and I don't know what else she has up her sleeves. She may have another show to go do. <laughs> and, um, you know, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. This was lots of fun. I appreciate you guys inviting me on the show. Yeah, it's next time we'll actually awesome. do it. So, like, right. <laughs> <laughs> so from me, Bridgette Lambend in Cape Town, South Africa, it's goodbye for now. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next week. Yes, and goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>